I love it when I see revenge happen. And this is a little bit petty, too. Now, of course, everything's politically motivated. There's always a rhyme and reason. But for me, this is hilarious. Because in 2020, we saw Tulsi Gabbard destroy Kamala Harris. And the thing is, folks, I, I, I still enjoy that video to this day. It's, it's entertaining to me because I laugh at it. Because that was not once but twice we saw their front runner, their beautiful person on the platform. The Democrats, were because they were trying to make Kamala a thing in 2020. And it was just Thanos out of existence. And that's great. That's fine. So I want to pull up this video here where basically Tulsi Gabbard says Kamala Harris says one thing and does another. And it's funny to me. It's funny because I love seeing this happen. It's beautiful. It's hilarious. Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president. But I'm deeply concerned about this record. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. The viral moment from 2019 Democratic presidential debates and many folks say knock Kamala Harris right out of the primary race. Let's bring in Fox News contributor Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi, great to have you on. It really was a knockout moment in 2019. Five years later, she's avoiding her record, avoiding policies. What do you think now, Tulsi? Well, she she is avoiding these interviews. She doesn't want to do she doesn't want to debate Donald Trump, for example, on Fox News. We're going to continue to see her try to shy away from any opportunity where either the media or Donald Trump has to expose her hypocrisy and how she says one thing and does another. She's going to try to continue this revisionist mm -hmm. history. She's got the propaganda media helping her do that. The Federal Election Commission should investigate them for in-kind contributions, quite frankly. But I, I just hope the American people really look at her record because her record yeah. speaks to the kind of radical agenda that she will continue, not only what she's done over these last four years, but that she will continue and escalate yeah. if she is elected as president. And I wanted to go over some of these leadership issues with her because here's some of the headlines. Doubtful leadership. New York Times, how Kamala Harris's campaign unravel. Politico, not a healthy environment. Kamala Harris office rife. CNN, exasperation, dysfunction inside Kamala Harris. Frustrating start as vice president. Axios, burnout, money, concern. WAPO, a Kamala Harris staff exodus. Politico, a new book says Biden called Harris a work in progress on it. Though Those who worked for her, Tulsi Gabbard, said it was awful. And to me, I find that funny. I, I find it hilarious because we talked about Kamala Harris and how she was losing her staff members, how she was losing people working for her, how she was losing all of that, all of it at the same time. And that's and that's and that's funny to me. And I think we all should laugh at it together because Kamala Harris has been hyped up as a person that is unbreakable, unbeatable, according to the DNC. But she's not. She has no policies. I mean, I, you've seen me pull up her campaign website. It is now August 16th. Kamala, what are your policies? What are you running on? What issues are you running on? Are you prepared to actually be a leader? And the answer is a most definite no, she is not. Yeah, what's interesting, though, Trace, is you look at the dates of those headlines. That was when the media decided that she wasn't going to be their person. The Democrat elite, those who were making the decisions during Joe Biden's presidency behind the curtains, mm -hmm. the controllers, uh, they've decided now, well, she is the person. And so you wouldn't see any of those headlines coming out of the propaganda <laughs> media today. Quite the opposite. Again, they are painting this revisionist history picture, which reminds us about how much uh, nonsense we are going to continue to be fed over these next few months. And, and really, it's going to be up to us as voters to, to wade no. through all of that and look at her record. Because even as she rolls out all these new policy positions, she's going to run away from Joe Biden and his record and Bidenomics, all these things that yeah. she celebrated. She's in office. She could take action and implement these new policies <laughs> right now. Why, why wait? Why wait? Why has she waited three and a half years, quite frankly? We have asked the same thing. Kind of a double question. I've got about 45 seconds left for you, Tulsi. Uh, speaking of debate, she's agreed to one. Will she do more? And is the media going to let her get away with just not talking? 
I sure hope not. I think there's, you know, I saw someone on CNN and a couple others uh, already starting to push, you know, they, they need their clicks and they need their ratings too. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see that this is about staffers and pollsters telling Kamala Harris what she should say, which is why she's avoiding interviews yeah. and press conferences, because they're afraid she will be exposed for who she is, an empty suit, a typical politician and a fake person, not someone who cares about the interests of the American people. She wants power and she will do whatever it takes to get there. Well, I'm glad it's Tulsi Gabbard brought up CNN because Gretchen Carlson thinks VP Harris should pivot to the center. And then the panel debates if she should even give an interview. One person says she's doing very well without s saying much of anything. Oh, are you? Oh, you think I'm joking here? Because while it is hilarious seeing Tulsi Gabbard, you know, once again give a smack in the mouth to Kamala, it's hilarious to me seeing CNN saying, "Oh, it's perfectly fine." Now remember, corporate media went to bat for Biden when he was hiding in his basement during the 2020 election cycle. They're no different than how they're acting now. Well, I'm glad you invited the independent to the table. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think she's going to pivot. I think she needs to pivot to a little bit more of the center left. Uh, because if you look at the recent Gallup poll and what Americans feel about Biden's economics, 80% believe that the country is going in the wrong direction. Um, at the same time, you have another poll that says that Kamala Harris is beating Donald Trump on the economy. So which one is it? But I think from an independent point of view, she has to pivot to the center. I think it's very smart to be talking about the economy because we all know that that's the first thing that people think about in an election. I also just want to point out that she is doing very well without saying much of anything. I mean, she's now making Florida. Are you sure about this? Because I remember when Democrats were saying that Hill Dog had it in, in the bag and Hill Dog was doing debates and conferences. You think hiding your candidate's going to bring up enthusiasm? Now, look, I get I get it. There's a lot of uh, brain dead liberal voters out there. There's a lot of brain dead people who think that Kamala is their girl because they're afraid of Donald Trump. If she can't handle the debate with Tulsi Gabbard, what makes you think that she can even handle running the country? It wasn't too long ago throughout 2020, 2020 run, 2022. And 2023, there have been reports about Kamala Harris being ineffective, a work in progress, according to Joe Biden, hemorrhaging staff, not uh, coming to terms with her role of being a vice president, unable to lead. And now we're expecting her to be the nominee. Everything's being rolled out for a, car a carpet uh, for uh, the car is being rolled out for Kamala Harris to do this, to be presented before the American people. And yet hiding her seems to be the Democrats' number one strategy. You know what tells me, Democrats? You're afraid of Kamala screwing up and once again have an egg on your face like how you did with Joe Biden. How did that work out for you? And even if Kamala wins the presidency, well, she'll be in office for four years. Do you think her approval rating is going to go up? Do you think people are just going to forever be in a honeymoon phase? I mean, I get it, corporate media, CNN, MSNBC that you have a job to do, but there does come a point to where you're like, okay, the people aren't believing our lies anymore, which is why you guys are hemorrhaging viewers, which is why you have to bully your way onto social media platforms to be relevant. You're done. A, a potential swing state that could go back to her. I know you're shaking your no. head, but, <laughs> but you just wait and see. Um, she's, <laughs> she's, she's now getting the Robert F. Kennedy Jr., votes because he said some more crazy things. And so now the people who didn't want Trump or Biden seem to be going to Kamala Harris. And she's also chipping away at Trump. Who? Who are these people? A bird goes tweet and an owl goes, who? <clears throat> no, seriously. Seriously. Tell me. Who? Who? Base which is how he went through that blue wall in 2016 with Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania. She's now getting to the working class white people. So I understand why she hasn't said a lot, even though if I were advising her, I would say do more debates and do a press conference yeah. soon. I mean, look, it, it, as a if you're a campaign, I mean, I'm sure your campaign manager would say that. If things are going well, don't mess with right, it. Right, don't right. add more variables. And that's what they're doing. I, I mean, I have an interest. Gretchen, I'm sure you do too, in wanting to hear her yes. answer questions. Uh, but I, I can see why the campaign is trying to avoid it. Oh, absolutely. If you're the campaign, if you're the candidate, you don't want to go out there and subject yourself to questions from the media every day. The reason why Donald Trump took to questions today is because he needs to get attention. She's getting all the attention in the world, and it's all good because she's, she's still got the enthusiasm. 
these people are eating crap. They're eating crap sandwiches, and they're, they're saying it's the best thing they ever ate. These people know how to uh, follow orders. Here's your script. Read it properly. Camp, the, the campaign is excited. The party's excited. The country's excited. So why would you yeah. mess that up and go have a press conference? Why would you go mess it up and have a press conference? Because you know what? People need to know. I mean, what does Kamala stand for? Does she stand for anything at all, period? Does she? It kind of matters. Voters want to know. Anyways. They have a right to ask for the questions, right. but she's answering questions. She's just not doing it in the context. She's not doing it in the context questions. of a formal press conference. Say, though, whatever she's doing is good. And she, <laughs> she's winning. She's not, whatever she's, she's winning. winning. Oh, hey, doing the bare minimum. That's what the Office of Presidency has been reduced down to. So when Tulsi Gabbard called her out, Tulsi Gabbard was correct. She doesn't stand for anything. She doesn't do press conferences. She's not doing interviews. Because left her own devices, Kamala's a fool. And we saw this in 2019, 2020. Marianne Williamson lasted longer than Kamala Harris in the 2020 primary. Okay? And all of corporate media was making fun of Marianne Williamson. And let's face it, Marianne Williamson's campaign was nothing more than a complete epic disaster in, in the 2024 election cycle for the primary. But the fact that Marianne Williamson lasted longer than Kamala in 2020 says a lot. That the fact that Kamala, without doing anything, not saying anything, is being viewed by the media as a good thing. That's not a good thing because voters want to know where she stands on issues. I mean, say what you will, Trump is uh, not doing himself any favors, but at least he's out there before the public. Dr. Jill Stein is out there before the public. RFK Jr. is out there before the public. What are they doing wrong? Because they're out there sharing their policies and perspectives and points of view. Kamala isn't. Oh, Wait a minute. Let, let's, be, let, let's have an honest discussion by someone who's actually worked on a campaign. She is not Which winning. I have done too, by she the way. She is absolutely several. not winning. Well, what are you worried you about? Look, if on, she ain't winning, what's you worried about? You look at the real clear politics average, you look at all the national polls, she is five to six points behind where Joe Biden was at oh, this okay. point in 2020, nationally and all the battleground states. The election was Here's decided. Joe Biden had been a candidate for a year at that votes. Joe Biden had been a candidate for a year that, but she's been a candidate for three weeks. That's what we can say. That's what's amazing. About about you're, you're in a honeymoon phase, okay? People are going to wake up because voters want to know. You just can't hide behind. Oh, Trump! It's Donald Trump's a bad guy. Voter turnout's key, Democrats. You're going to need that. Three weeks. She's done. She's Mark, done this in three weeks. Here's what we can say about what the polls say. The, the CNN's poll polls. We we try to take the best polls, only the best polls here right. at CNN. Hey, does CNN make the best polls? Type one for yes, Kit. They do. See, that's real news. CNN tells the truth. Shame on you, and shame on independent media. Type two. Nah, nah. <clears throat> CNN doesn't do good polls. And type three. The only good polls I like seeing is at the strip clubs. Ooh la la. I wonder how many threes will be in the chat. Uh, it, it's basically a statistical tie <clears throat> uh, between, between the two of them. However, that's better than where Joe Biden was a few months right. ago. Yes, yeah, so much better. But by the way, folks, I just want to pull up this article here. Just to trigger the liberals. Kamala's allies urge her not to speak to media. So amid criticism from Republicans, as well as others in the media for not doing any long form interviews since becoming a Democratic nominee for president, allies of Kamala Harris have reportedly urged her not to do so because they realize she just doesn't know how to speak. The revelation came from an article from the Wall Street Journal on her possible economic policies that reported Harris's ascension to the top of the ticket has energized Democrats and some allies have cautioned against doing anything that could slow that momentum, including lengthy interviews with media outlets. Economic advisors to Harris's campaign have also had concerns about her being too detailed in policy uh, proposals. Whoa, that'd be great if we actually got policy proposals saying that she would possibly open herself up to attacks from Republicans and conservatives in the media. Harris has said she will do one interview before the end of the month, along with agreeing to one out of the three debates Trump has agreed to. So you know what that means, folks? Hold on. We're going to have some fun here. We're going to have some fun here. 
we're gonna we're gonna once again pay a little visit. Now anything can happen between now and tomorrow and the next day and whatever. I see no policy. I see no policy. I had to hit the refresh page. I see no policy. Now, when you read a line like that, because they're afraid that she might open herself up to attacks from Republicans and conservatives, well, that's politics 101. Politics 101 is you're supposed to open yourself up to attacks and stand up and fight for your values and perspectives. This tells me that Kamala doesn't know how to fight. This tells me that Kamala doesn't have a leg to stand on. This tells me that Kamala is incapable of actually, you know, dare I say it, winning. She doesn't have it. Now, maybe we'll find out what her policies are, but how long do we have to wait for? One more week, two more weeks, three more weeks, four more weeks, five more weeks, six more weeks, seven more weeks, eight more weeks until the end of the election? Or wait, when she... If she becomes president, then we'll know what her policies are. Democrats, you have given us nothing. Democrats, you have shown us absolutely jack. And now we're supposed to assume, now more than ever, that, oh, wait a minute, you actually do care? See, what Tulsi Gabbard said in regards to Kamala Harris is true. Kamala Harris is just an empty suit. Kamala Harris is nothing but words. She doesn't stand for anything and never will.